everyone, it's Gina and I'm back with another video and this is a very different video from what I am used to doing, but I felt that I needed to I needed to do this. I woke up this morning very early and uh, it was actually something that kind of jogged me out of sleep and it was the words 15 bean soup. And the first thing that came to my mind was not that again. There's a story behind the whole 15 bean soup. Years ago, I was walking through, I believe it was Walmart. Pretty sure it was Walmart. And I'm walking down the what's considered to be the ethnic aisle. And, you know, I'm looking for, for beans because I cook with beans a lot. So I walk past and I see this package of 15 bean soup. And something just told me to pick it up. I never did use it, and this, we're talking about eight years ago. That package of 15 bean soup sat in my pantry for the longest time. And then I ended up moving. And as you know, before I'm, I move, I'm going through all of these different things and deciding what needs to be thrown away and that sort of thing. And I get to this package of 15 bean soup, and I thought to myself, it's been years. There's no way that I'm going to use this, right? So I ended up throwing away the package of 15 bean soup. It's all it's a dried, not canned, the dried stuff. So this morning, I mean, we're skip forward to, you know, skip forward eight years since I had purchased this thing, and um, about a year and a half since I'd thrown it away. And I woke up, I mean, literally was jolted out of sleep with 15 bean soup. And I like, oh, not this again. What's with the 15 bean soup? And uh, I grabbed my journal and I started making some notes. And I'm going to share those with you because I felt that I was supposed to bring a message regarding the 15 bean soup in light of everything that is happening in the world today. And yes, I bought it like eight years ago and it just sat there and I knew that there was a reason why it just never occurred to me, which is why I ended up throwing it away. Because, you know, I, walk, I was walking through this thing and I've never picked up a 15 bean soup package before. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, what the full 15 bean soup means and uh, you know, in light of what's happening in the in the world today, the most recent events, and just kind of share a little bit of my heart with you. Like I said, I made some notes. I picked up my journal and I just started writing some stuff down. So I'm going to be glancing, you know, glancing at them as I'm sharing my heart with you. And then later on, I'm also going to share with you a 15 bean soup and kind of explain to you why this is significant with everything that is going on. If, you're, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have a, a Facebook page called Beating Autoimmunity the Natural Way. The original name was Beating Lupus the Natural Way. Because for the last, what, eight years now, since I was diagnosed with lupus, I've been researching and documenting different natural remedies that have been working for me as far as uh, you know, lupus and healing my body from lupus is concerned. And I started the lupus page many years ago because I felt it was a platform that I could share my findings as far as natural remedies and how they would work for healing, healing the body from autoimmunity. It wasn't, it's, the page was not designed just for white people. It wasn't designed for black people. It wasn't designed for Hispanics or Italians or whoever. It was designed for people who were looking for alternative remedies. It didn't matter what skin color they were. It didn't matter what age you were. Because I realized that lupus didn't know skin color. Lupus didn't care about age. Autoimmunity wasn't looking at any of that stuff. And in most recent events, we're dealing here with COVID-19 and the coronavirus. And COVID-19 doesn't care about your skin color. It doesn't care about your age. It doesn't care about your wealth or whether you're from uh, wealth, you're wealthy or 
in poverty. It doesn't look at any of that stuff, right? So the main reason why I wanted to create this page or why I created this, this page was number one was to provide knowledge because there was so much ignorance surrounding lupus and there was so much um, ignorance surrounding whether or not you could use natural remedies to heal autoimmunity and there was a lot of ignorance around whether autoimmunity could be cured in the first place right so I wanted to address those issues based on my research and based on my own experience the second thing was I wanted to provide support for those people who are feeling kind of isolated because they have this illness which everybody's telling them is incurable but yet you know they're hearing from other people that it is curable and there are other ways of healing your body so I wanted I know that there were a lot of people who are feeling isolated because here they were with a disease that nobody really under, understood and it was called it's called um, what the it, it's basically like an invisible illness because a lot of the times when you have this illness you look perfectly healthy on the outside so there's a lot of ignorance um, on the side of the people who don't really experience the disease because they don't they, they feel that a disease should have some visible manifestation right but not all it doesn't happen that way all the time I also wanted to provide wisdom that was gained from my trial and error because I did go through a lot of different things before I finally you know came upon things that were actually working for me so that's why my lupus page was created and anybody is welcome there it doesn't matter what your skin color it doesn't matter what your your um, ethnic heritage or ethnic background is everybody is welcome to visit that page and ask questions and gain wisdom gain knowledge from what I've learned and from what other people have learned it's not just limited to to special groups Lupus isn't limited to a special group. COVID-19 isn't limited to a special group. They don't care about what color or ethnic background you are, right? One of the things I found out in my research was that women, men, children, black, white, Hispanics, these are all people that I've met that have lupus or other autoimmune um, diseases. It didn't, it wasn't looking at their skin color. Some of the most wonderful people that I've met have been on this platform and majority of them don't look like me okay one of the things I did realize is that even though we didn't look like we were all fighting one common enemy and that was called lupus and in most of the cases it was just basically autoimmunity because the majority of us when we were diagnosed with lupus, there were other autoimmune conditions that decided they wanted to tag along and hop on the bandwagon as well. So we had that one common enemy of lupus or autoimmunity, whatever that autoimmune immunity condition was. So all of us came together and we were fighting this one common thing. And it's the same thing with COVID-19. We're all coming together trying to fight this one illness out there that's been attacking, attacking everyone doesn't matter what your skin color is and one of the things that I found out when I was doing all of the research and all of the trying of the different herbs and and whatnot is that there wasn't just one modality that I worked with I worked with several different ones I worked with herbs I worked with essential oils um, I also worked with things like crystals I worked with sound therapy I worked with um, changing my diet it was a multitude of different things that I worked with and it's still a multitude of things that I work with today it isn't just one thing that works for me and some of the things that work for me may not necessarily work for other people but it is a multitude of things that I work with today to keep my body healthy right so there's several different modalities that come together to make the whole person that you see sitting in front of you so as I was saying, this platform, the my lupus page was created to show, you know, the people who are following the different natural remedies that could be used to heal the body from autoimmunity. And I've learned a lot from nature as a result, and I wanted to share some of those things with you. So what can 
nature teach us about what's going on in the world today and that is what I you know kind of gave all of that to bring you to this what can nature teach us I just mentioned that there are a multitude of modalities that I worked with that I tried and that I'm still using today in order to to heal my body and to make to make me whole again right so number one Everything in nature is different. Everything is unique. We look outside and we see trees, but there's more than one type of tree out there. There's the oak tree, there's the pine tree, there's the palm tree, there's a multitude of different trees that are out there. Nature is different. We have all different kinds of birds. We have all different kinds of animals. Nature is different. When we look outside and we see all of these different trees, we don't hear any arguing among the trees. These trees know that they have a higher purpose. There's the oak tree standing next to a pine tree, which might be there might be a, a palm tree that's growing up beside it. But they all know that they serve a higher purpose. They absorb the carbon dioxide. They give out the oxygen which we need to breathe right without the trees we don't get the oxygen but yet we don't see any fighting we don't hear the, the oak tree saying to the pine tree you don't belong over here you need to go over to that side to be with all the other pine trees because this particular side is just for the oak trees you don't hear the palm trees saying oh you oak tree you don't belong over here this is for the this is the side for the palm trees so you get your little self over to the other side. When we drive down the, the roads and we look in the medians and we see all of these palm trees just kind of lined off there, or we look into an orchard and we see all of the orange trees kind of lined off in the perfect order, or we look in a vineyard and we see all the grapevines kind of lined off, that's not natural. Man did that. Humans did that. Right? Nature isn't divided. Nature doesn't spit out the seeds into a certain spot and neatly just arranges everything. Human beings like to divide everything up and put the orange groves over there and they have this other thing over here. But you go out into, into nature, there's all kinds of trees out there. You're going to walk under an oak tree, there's a pine tree over there, there's maybe an orange tree that you know popped up o over here. There's all different kinds of trees because that's the way nature intended, right? It's it's mankind that has changed the landscape to kind of fit let nature fit into what we desire. Whenever um, constructions are happening, housing constructions, all of the trees are leveled, right? And the houses are built and then a couple trees go in wherever you know the people who are doing the construction decide that the trees would would best serve right but out in nature nature supports each other if you see a palm tree and an oak tree growing very close together they're not separated you look deep down and those roots are intertwined that they're holding that soil together for, to support both of them right because they realize that they have to Kind of lean on each other that soil is there to support both of the trees not just one right you don't hear them saying um, maybe there's a mango tree that started to grow up you don't hear it saying to that mango tree oh you can't plant roots here you need to root yourself up and go over there and be with all of the other mango trees you don't hear nature saying that because they support each other Nature doesn't separate. Only humans do that. But we can learn a lot from nature as far as the whole separation thing is concerned. Some of my favorite memories of childhood is going out into the yard and I could literally walk around and make a fruit salad with everything that was in the yard, all of the fruit trees, mango trees, plum trees, we have them called the June plum, 
bananas, soursop. There's lots of different types of mangoes, cherry trees. Gosh. And you could walk in and, or you don't even have to go into the house after collecting. I, I used to just sit under the tree with a big bowl of different fruits and just have that. That was breakfast. Just eating off of all of the different trees that were in the yard. And they weren't carefully manicured and put into one particular spot. We didn't have all the mango trees in one spot and all the orange trees and the, the plum trees and they were there, right? And sometimes a mango would drop off of the, off of the, the mango tree and would just start growing another one. Or the coconut tree would drop one and it would just start growing another one. It wasn't moved over to another better location. Nature drops it. Wherever it drops, nature believes that's the best place, it grows. But, I mean, everything was existing together in nature. They all got the same light. They got the light that they needed for their growth and for their existence. And they provided the fruit, the food, for the people who lived in the home. But they didn't fight among each other. They didn't separate because nature doesn't do that humans do I mentioned that when when I was growing up there were so many different mango trees in the yard there was the East Indian mango there was the common mango and then there's quite a few that I don't even remember but you you can't eat you can't pick a um, well there was one called Julie you can't pick a Julie mango bite into that and then say oh you don't taste like the East Indian mango or you don't taste like the common mango even among the mangoes there's so many different varieties and they all have their own unique taste and that's what's so beautiful about these is that they all have their own unique qualities their own unique taste and you, you don't eat a Julie mango expecting for it to taste like an East Indian mango. You don't eat an East, East Indian mango expecting it to taste like a common mango. Because they have such unique tastes and unique qualities about them. And that's another beauty of, of nature. It's just Nature can certainly teach us, you know, there's, all of us are unique. We are all different. We all have certain qualities about us. We all have certain characteristics that help to uh, to unify and to, to educate and just help the community in general. Simply because we don't look a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have certain knowledge that we can share with the rest of the community. It doesn't matter how different you are. That is what makes each of us unique. That makes us perfect. Just the way you are, just the way I am. Doesn't matter what the skin tone is, doesn't matter what your skin color is or your race is. And the whole thing with race, that was also a man-made term. Go ahead and do the research. But that's also, that's a man-made term, the term race. We are all unique individuals with unique personalities, unique characteristics. And when all of those come together, just imagine the beauty that can be created. In nature, everything is unique. And nature knows that. All of the different birds, all of the different animals. There's a lake over in Brevard County, Florida, that I love to visit and to photograph birds. Because it's one lake, at least at the time, now there's been so much construction that a lot of the habitat has been removed and so a lot of the birds don't come there anymore. But I have such great photographs of all kinds of birds that I photographed on one particular summer. We're talking about rosette 
I call them Rosita. Rosita spoon bills, the pink birds with the beaks that look like a, a spoon. There are ibises, there are you know great blue herons that that frequented there, and this giant bird that to this day I don't even know what it was called, but I I have pictures of so many different birds that I captured on one occasion within a matter of an hour. All of these different birds came to this one lake, and there was no competition. There was enough food for all of them. They all looked different. They didn't fight among each other. They all just enjoyed the banks or the occasional dip in the water together, not caring that that one over there was pink, that particular ibis was white, then the occasional red ibis showed up, and then, oh, that great blue heron showed up. All different colors of birds, all unique, but all existing in this one area, not fighting getting along regardless of the color of their feathers. One of the things that I love about spring is when all of the, especially for those trees that uh, tend to lose their leaves, once they start to bud and then you know see, you see all of this different shade of green, especially when you're driving along the highway and it's just nothing but woods on either side and you see all of the, the trees but they're all different shades of green. There's a light color green, there's a up to the darkest green, and if you're an artist like me, there's some shades that are called bluegrass green, there's some that are called Kelly green, then there's hunter green and forest green, and there's, there's all different shades of green. But they all exist in this one area. You take a look and it's all these different shades of green as you're driving along. All of these different trees right just all existing together not fighting for the sunshine not fighting for for any food but all different shades of green and i call it uh there's a word i don't know if it's a real word because i didn't even look it up it was just something that popped into my head um chlorophyllated because they have some of them are are, are lighter green than than some that are darker green right but they don't care about that. They know that they're, they're a tree. They don't care that the tree next to them doesn't look like the one that, you know, that they are. They're just there to provide a service to humanity, which is providing either food or providing the oxygen that we breathe, right? They don't care that one is lightly chlorophyllated, and I'm pretty sure that's not a word, um, they don't care that that one over there is has a little bit more chlorophyll than the the one that's over here. They just all exist together doing their job, their own unique job, right? Birds, animals, nature in general, they don't judge on the color of the leaves. They don't judge on how they look, whether they're pink or blue or whatever the color is. They don't care. The lions don't care that the tigers have stripes. The tigers don't care that the zebra stripes are black and white or white and black. They don't care. They don't care about labels. Human beings are the ones that put labels on everything. By putting labels on everything, we tend to forget that we are one. And it isn't until we start to remove all the labels, like black, like white, like whatever label there is, it's only then that we're going to remember we are one. It's only then that we're going to become unified and know that we are put here on this planet for a greater purpose. Once each of us starts to drop those labels, there's going to be a, an awakening within each of us and we, we, when we realize what our soul purpose is. That's what we each need to get back to. Is what, what is our soul purpose for being here? 
and the sole purpose has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It doesn't have anything to do with how lightly pigmented you are or how darkly pigmented you are. You have a sole purpose and when we get back to that, all of those labels will start to fall. I remember coming to college over here many years ago. And uh, at the time, I had very long hair, long curly hair, and of course I spoke differently. And uh, I would get the question a lot, what are you? And uh, for the longest time, it was actually the first time I really had to think about who I was, and they weren't really talking about the inner part of me, they were talking about me as a you know what they were seeing externally and it, that, it was the first time I really had to think about what am I you know uh, I, I knew I was born in the Cayman Islands I was raised in Jamaica my mother was a but I didn't even think of my mother in terms of black or white she was just my mother I didn't even think in terms of color until I actually came uh, color and uh, as far as you know me is concerned until I came to college over here and I kept on getting these questions well what are you you know um, some people would look at me and they thought I was um, from Louisiana because I had that that red color so I must be Creole or um, some people were just confused and uh, I remember walking through a carnival one night. It was not really a carnival. It was um, some. It was a fun time with you know there were lots of um, different like rides and things set up. So I guess it's kind of a carnival. And I overheard a couple of girls saying, basically among themselves, you know, is that her hair? I wonder if that's real. And uh, it kind of bothered me. And I was like, because at the time I was I was personally really ignorant of the fact that. You could buy certain things in the store and you could put into your own hair and you could really make it look like yours. So I was coming uh, also from an ignorant um, part. Um, and I remember them saying, you know, asking each other, saying, I wonder if her, her hair is real. And one of them was actually bold enough to come up and tug on my hair to find out if it was real. And it gave me quite a headache. And I turned and I looked at them and I said, she said, oh, I'm sorry, I just, you know, was curious if, as to whether your hair was real or not. And at the time, I knew enough by then about the fact that you could go and purchase hair. So I looked at them and I said, you know, whether I grew this out myself, which I did, or I purchased it in a store and put it into my head, it's my hair. And I really didn't appreciate you pulling on my hair like you did. Because it was, uh, and, I, and I totally understand the way that it was done. It was basically out of, out of ignorance because um, there's this... I guess um, presumption that when you're of a certain skin color, you're you know you can't have long voluptuous hair and it's all of this, so you kind of have to go and buy it in a store and add into yours. To, and it's uh, I'm not knocking any of that. That is just perfectly fine. But I do I, I think that there's there there that there's that group that feels that um, certain people are not good enough simply because they they don't have the, the straight hair like the, like others do and uh, you all know what I'm talking about right the thing is that's what that's what makes us all beautiful we're all different we're all unique and I remember the first time that someone I'm not gonna call any names actually looked at me and said you know you're kind of lucky and it was because of a horrible experience that that person had, had had experienced all right and uh, that person looked at me and said you know you're lucky because you can always pass as white and uh, that statement was very hurtful at the time and there are other people who also said that to me and I'm thinking you know when are we going to get past this color thing I don't know what to call it. When are we going to stop seeing skin color and look a little deeper? 
isn't this what dr martin luther king preached before he was assassinated that he was praying for a an america a world where his kids could grow up and not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character and as a mom i've got three children and you know i was talking about the whole skin color thing earlier i know that i am mixed with everything there's European, there's um, African, there's the um, suspicion of the you know, Arawak Indians that was uh, prevalent in the Caribbean. I was, you know, my, my mother's in the, from Grand Cayman. My father was Jamaican. My kids, they're mixed with everything. And I'm thinking, how they're a little bit darker than I am. They have a little bit more, you know, darkness to their skin tone. But they are mixed with everything. If you take their, their blood, their DNA, and you tested it, it's going to come from several continents throughout this world. And the funny thing is, if you do that with many many people you're gonna find the same thing yet we spend so much time focused on what you see here the skin knowing that if you took our blood the each of our blood would come from so many different parts throughout the world and realize that we are connected a lot more than we like to think that we are the same in more ways than we like to think. There was a commercial that was that came out many many years ago now about uh, the 23andMe test, the DNA, you know that where you can find out your genealogy. And I remember watching this video, and there was a guy in there who was from Germany, and then I think there was a girl in there who was Jewish. And I remember the German guy, you know, blatantly talking about how he, he grew up being raised to, to hate certain people. Now, the, the, Ger yeah, the German guy grew up being you know, raised to hate a certain, certain group of people. And then by the end, all of these tests were done. It turns out that the German guy and the Jewish girl that were there were cousins. We are more connected than we like to think. We are more alike than we like to think. So when is it going to happen that this division as far as our skin color, as far as its race is concerned, when is that division going to stop? Is it going to stop in my lifetime? Probably not. Is it going to stop in my children's lifetime? My oldest son is 25. My youngest is 14. And my daughter, she's 23 years old. Beautiful young woman. I've got beautiful kids. But they just happen to be darker than most people. So when is this going to end? Is it going to be during their lifetime? I don't know. I have a granddaughter. When you look at her, she's as white as they come. But she has a head full of curly, curly hair. Is she going to be facing the same kind of persecution in her lifetime? Simply because she's got a little bit of Should I say a little bit of blackness in her? When is it going to end? Every year, around this time of year, you know, there's always all these festivals that are happening, right? There's a Caribbean festival, there's the Indian festival, and the later part of the year we have the Greek festivals. Why do we why do we like to go to these festivals? Because they're different. We're celebrating the uniqueness of these particular groups of people, these particular individuals. We go there to celebrate and to try out their foods, to celebrate their culture with them, because they have certain qualities about them that we love, right? 
I don't know if there's anybody here who can say that they don't like Greek food. I'm not Greek. I love Greek food. We go to all of these Caribbean festivals. Yes, I'm from the Caribbean. I love to celebrate my culture. But I also love to go to the Indian festival every year because I love Indian food. I love to celebrate their culture. I go to other other um, events as well. We used to have a festival called Juneteenth, which is basically a celebration of the you know the the freedom of slave slave the the emancipation of of slaves way back in the day. It has come to mean a lot more than that, but as that is how Juneteenth got got started. But it's a celebration of culture. It's a celebrate of all a celebration of all the different cultures that exist within America. America has been called a melting pot, right? But yet, even among this melting pot, we still try to put up these little blocks and say, okay, that's your section, and you don't belong here, and you don't... That's kind of hard to have a melting pot when you have all of these little borders, these little divisions within this pot. When, you, when you're... When things are thrown into a pot, you can't determine how they're divided. They're going to kind of melt together. Right? That's what America is supposed to be. People have come to this country for generations because they see it as a land of opportunity and they see it as a place where there's freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of culture and freedom. But yet here we are still in the year 2020 in the middle of civil unrest because a certain group of people are still being persecuted over 400 years later. This group of people still being persecuted, even though so many of those people are now mixed up with me. There's lots of interracial couples who are giving birth to these mixed children who are still being put into this group when they are looked upon they're seeing this little bit of color and because they have this little bit of color you're lumped into this one group that one group that's being persecuted and if I'm bold bold enough to say here it is not just the persecution persecution isn't just from the outside yes I know this main event that occurred was because of one particular um, police officer who was of a certain skin color who killed a black man. So yes, we're in the middle of this, but that the, the persecution doesn't only come from the white people to this particular group, to, to, to the blacks. It's not just there. There's persecution even within that group. And I'm going to be really bold here and say that. When you're, there's the the lightly melanin or the the light colored black people all the way over to the charcoal colored black people there's persecution in there as well I've seen it I've experienced it when is all of this gonna stop when are we going to realize we are one and it's only when we start working together can we actually create the world that we've been envisioning, the world that Martin Luther King envisioned, the world that President Abraham Lincoln envisioned when he declared slavery was, was, um, was abolished, the world that came about when President Obama got elected as president. Right? I know we haven't forgotten that there has been a black president who has sat in office. So when is when is this going to stop? And to be honest, I battled really hard about you know responding to everything that's going on. But when I woke up this morning and I heard the I mean the message was loud and clear, fifteen bean soup. What? I haven't heard that in, you know, since 
I bought this packet from Walmart many years ago and I've since thrown it away but I realized that there was a reason why I had to purchase this thing because it's a clear message that I have to share with you it doesn't matter what shade of black you are it doesn't matter what color you are we are one and we are all here to serve a higher purpose we all have our own soul purpose to carry out on this planet we have to leave a better world for our children for our grandchildren for our great grandchildren because God forbid that the world that we're living in right now is the same world that exists a hundred years from now what is it going to take for that to happen. We have to be unified. We have to see each other as equals. We have to respect each person's unique qualities, each person's unique characteristics. We have to respect each person's unique job that they're going to play on this planet. We have to respect each other's individual soul purpose because each individual soul purpose is going to come together to create that great awakening that is going to happen. That's the only thing that's going to make it happen. Respect for all of those things. Respect for each individual purpose regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of whether you're rich or poor regardless of the country that you're from regardless of your religious upbringing and your religious background we all have our sole purpose that we need to accomplish that we were born to do and when we all come together and do that That's when we'll realize why we are here, why we're one. We are one. So I've been mentioning this 15 bean soup, right? So I'm going to give you a little bit of a visual here. And these are the things I'm actually going to be creating the soup. And I'm going to share that with you at the end. These are butter beans. And you can see these are white or beige or whatever color you want to call them and I'm going to let this represent the for lack of a better word the white people here we have some black beans and I'm going to let that represent black black people or African Americans or whatever term we want to use here here we have some kidney beans, light red kidney beans. So I'm going to let this represent the lighter color folks, whether you're um, Hispanic, Native American, or lighter shade of, of black people. And here again, we have an even lighter shade. You get where I'm going with this? And it's a different, they're all different types of beans as well. Here we have some flat green beans. These are the Italian green beans. Here we have some French style green beans. Here we have just some cut green beans. Here's a different combination. This is, um, I'm going to let this be 
you can take it however and the reason why I'm using the canned goods is because I went out looking for a package of the the um, 15 bean soup packet that I had you know a couple years back I couldn't find any a lot of the beans have been sold out so I stood there and I said well maybe I'm not meant to do this and the thought popped in canned goods will work get the canned goods so this is your visual then here we have black eyed peas another diff another type of bean right here we have garbanzo beans again a different type of bean and th these are basically just kind of representing you know the different the different um, races for lack of a better word uh, different cultures again another type of kidney bean the dark dark red and here's one with um, chili right it's a little bit more spice to it so we can probably say that this is you know the um, maybe the folks from New Orleans that tourist a lot of you know the different spices so we're gonna let that one represent and then we have great northern bean so we have lots of different beans here there's, I think there's about I missed one here we have some sweet peas peas not technically a bean but um, it works for this one and then here we have some mixed vegetables and there's a little bit more than just the beans in here there's some potatoes there's some carrots but you get the idea of what this one represents and then so there are all the beans there's 15 cans to represent the 15 bean but then in addition to all of that when I'm making the soup I'm going to be putting in some canned tomatoes and some fresh from my garden I'm also going to be adding in some tomato sauce I'll also add in just a little bit of mushrooms and I have a few other vegetables that I'll add in so that would be I'm gonna let that represent the the blood that runs through our veins that connects us all right and then I'm also going to add in different seasonings like chili powder we have some thyme here we've got some bay leaves got some chopped onions and I also have some fresh onions that I'll, I'll put in I have some oregano uh, this isn't going in but I wanted to share that one with you that's some pumpkin spice here so you you see lots of different things are going to be added in to make this really come together to create that that uh, melting pot of flavor in our mouths right if I were to make a soup with just this, you think, eh, yeah, it's okay. But just imagine when two, three, four, all of those 15 are put together and they come together and throw in all of their unique qualities and flavors into this soup. Just imagine the taste. That you're going to get and then with the tomato sauce being the, the the juice that brings it all together the liquid that binds it all together and then all of the spices that get put in for one reason or another I'm going to be putting in um, the I put different herbs in based on what I'm cooking but time I know it's like an anti-inflammatory it's also good for removing heavy metals and that sort of thing and because I'm, I'm going to be using canned goods I work with a lot of herbs that I know are really good for chelating heavy metals right um, oregano is going to go in here basil is going to go in here basil is really good for for focus and for concentration and um, I have green onions out there that I'm going to be putting in them. I'll probably put in some sweet pepper, maybe some some hot pepper as well. I have um, bay leaf. I think I showed you some bay leaf 
that I'm also going to be putting in here. This is really good for um, for wisdom, and if you've ever used the the oil, it, the oil is said to to um, be good for enhancing um, your your for spiritual enlightenment. But every herb that is put into or and spice that is put into anything that I cook, but especially with with this. They all have their own part to play to create that beautiful dish that we're going to be enjoying. And that is what I'm hoping is going to, you know, kind of open your eyes to what the idea of America being a melting pot and how all of our unique qualities from every race, not just black and white, but from every person, how when we all come together and start to work together, what beauty we can really create, right? And that's what I'm hoping that you garnered from what I had to say. That's what I'm hoping you garner if you do decide to make this dish. And I, 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 I do hope you do. And as you put in all of the different ingredients, you just say, you know, we're all of us come together. May we all come together for our own, with our own sole purpose to create what is that higher purpose that we're all here for. Then, only then, can true change begin to happen. When we begin to realize our own unique qualities, our own beauties, and everybody's individual qualities and their own individual personalities and their own individual beauties. Only then can true change begin to happen. So I'm going to actually create this dish and I'm going to share it with you. It's going to be part of this video. I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear how you're coping with everything that's been happening. It has been a challenge. Um, I know I'm addressing this a little differently than most people have, and that's probably because I'm looking at it through different eyes. Everybody has their own way of viewing the world, everyone has their own way of viewing things, and a lot of it has to do with the way that you were raised as well. So I, I hope I'm not, you know, I welcome your, your feedback, like I said, but I'm speaking to you from from my perspective not as somebody who has dark dark skin or somebody who has white white skin I'm speaking to you from the perspective of being a mixed person who has given birth to children who are darker but their their dads are not they're not even Americans right my two older kids were for my for my ex-husband and he's not American. But yet but he's dark and I know that he's been persecuted because of the color of his skin. My youngest son has got Chinese heritage because his dad is part Chinese. But he's not American. He wasn't born in this on this country. But I know that he's all he was also persecuted because of the color of his skin. So when are we going to see that world that everybody is hoping for? Change will happen. I I know I know I just I know it's going to happen. It may not happen in my lifetime or your lifetime. I'm praying it happens in our children's lifetime, our children's lifetime. But I really hope that this does not go to where my granddaughter or your grandchildren are experiencing this. Change must happen, and it must happen quickly because this has been going on for far too long. If you do create the recipe, I would love to hear your feedback. I am going to be videotaping that section and sharing that with you at the end of 
end of this. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to know what thoughts came came to mind as you were creating this. I'd like to know what thoughts came to mind as you were listening. Like I said, this was just something that, you know, all of these thoughts were just kind of flooding into my head this morning and I just, I wrote them down and I realized that I, I had to, I had to speak. There is, there's a time to be silent and I realized that now is not the time. But I do realize that the message that I had to share is a lot different than what most people are sharing right now concerning what's going on in the world. And I do hope that you hear it from the way that I'm, my message was intended. I believe that's everything that I had written down that I please stay tuned. And um I'd love to hear your feedback, like I said. Share them with me. And um I hope you enjoy the recipe. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. I know this is not the my typical video, but um I think I, it, it needed to be said, and I'm going to leave you with that. Okay, so I went ahead and opened all of the different um, cans of beans, and I drained them in preparation. But I just want you to see, look at all of the different colors that are represented here in the 15 types of beans. This is the canned chopped tomatoes. And I'm going to make that represent the heartbeat of every single person on this planet right now. And I'm going to make the tomato paste or the tomato sauce here represent the blood that runs in our veins. And every single one of these beans is going to represent a particular race or a particular culture that exists within this country at the moment and even in the world. So you can see lots of different shades of the kidney beans lots of different shades of the other beans and I'm going to make the red pe the green peas and the different green beans represent Mother Earth and I'm hoping that you're getting the picture that I'm trying to portray here is that all of this is going to come together in one beautiful dish and that's how we should all work together to create beauty in this world I'm going to be um, creating this dish in the crock pot so I'm really hoping that everything is going to fit so let's head over to the crock pot shall crock we? pot let me go ahead and plug it in and this is a good size crock pot um, I'm hoping that everything is going to be able to fit in here this isn't going to take very long to cook because obviously they're you know this, these are canned uh, items so they're not going to be taking very long to cook but I'm going to give it enough time so that all of the seasonings really get into the beans all right let me go ahead and start adding everything in like I said I've already drained these so I'm just going to go ahead and add them in and as you're adding them you might want each one to basically represent a particular group or particular um, particular group of groups of persons um, and you can just say you know maybe a prayer for each of those that particular group as you're making this just adds a whole other level of energy when you're cooking let me go ahead and just add these all in and I'm representing all of the different shades of every person. Doesn't matter whether you are black, white, whether you're Hispanic, Chinese. There's so many different shades. I just want you to see what that looks like already. Isn't that pretty? Let me go ahead and add in the others. And I think it's going to be big enough. Actually, it's just going to be just big enough. I think this was the perfect size crock pot for this. Let me 
have some mixed vegetables. Got the green beans. And just go ahead and sprinkle some sweet peas in there. And then we have the mushrooms. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, chopped tomatoes as well as the um, tomato sauce. So here's the chopped tomatoes, which I'm saying is going to represent the heartbeat of every person. And then the tomato sauce is going to represent the, the blood that runs throughout all our veins. I don't know if any of you cook like this, but whenever I'm cooking any dish, there's I always set an intention, and everything that goes into the dishes that I create are intentionally put in there for healing and for doing good to our bodies. But let me go ahead and grab a spoon so I can start to stir this all together. I'll be back shortly. I went ahead and added it to a different pot because I realized I still have some ingredients to put in and I was afraid that the it was just going to overflow so I put it into a much bigger pot which is why it looks like this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this all together and then I'm going to add in a bunch of seasonings as well and I'll tell you what I'm putting in as I as I All right, in. so okay. what I'm adding in here these are some chopped sweet peppers, there's some basil, there's some chopped rosemary, um, some leeks, as well as some scallions that's in here that I've chopped up. So I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle all of this in. And you can imagine that the, all of these different seasonings and spices that I'm putting in are, could represent all of the, just the different... Um, the different qualities that each individual group just bring you know brings to the table we we love soul food we know that you know, that's typically associated with the african american culture we have other foods that's, that's associated with louisiana and we have certain foods associated with um with different air parts of north america um different foods associated with with france you you get the idea so we can just imagine that all of the spices and herbs that we're putting in could be just the the different spices and herbs that um, are the different qualities represented from from each different culture or groups of people that are that are represented in this particular soup okay I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the onions or the, add in the onions right now and then I have a few other seasonings I'm going to put in as well all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the different seasonings and I don't really measure anything. I just go according to how I feel. So, but um, I can give you an idea of how much I put in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in some chili powder. And that's probably about two tablespoons of chili powder. And chili powder has um, ground chili peppers, cumin, oregano, garlic powder, and a little bit of salt. So that is what's in the chili powder, just in case you're wondering. I'm going to put in some steakhouse seasoning, and this has paprika, um, different peppers, spicy peppers, salt, also has black pepper in there. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of that in. That's about a, maybe a teaspoon. I went ahead and added in some bay, some bay leaves. We know that you know in, in the Caribbean, especially, we lo love to cook with our bay leaves. But bay leaves are um, kind of represent for me here. It would represent wisdom, and uh, I'm going to add in maybe uh, 
about a tablespoon of sage. This is a lot of beans. So I'd say about a tablespoon of sage. And I'm going to put sage in there to kind of, you know, clear whatever negative energies are floating around regarding uh, the unity of all of these different groups that are represented. But it's also, um, sage is just one of those really, really delicious aromatic herbs to cook with. I'm also going to be adding in some thyme. And thyme, we know, is anti-inflammatory. It's antiseptic. Not to mention that it smells really good. So I'm, I put in about a, I think I put in about a one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to, uh, when I cook, I don't really measure. So for you, if you're, whenever you're creating this, see what seasonings you have in your in your pantry. Work with those. That's the beauty of this. You can create your very own dish. Okay, make it your own. Okay, so I went ahead and I added in a, a heaping tablespoon of chopped garlic. I also added in some crushed red peppers, you can see right here. And I also added in a, some curry, leaf, curry leaves. And then I added in oregano. And you can basically add in whatever seasons and spices that you want to add in. The last thing for me to add now is going to be the water. And I'm going to be using alkaline water. Alright, so I'm going to be pouring in the water. And I don't want to pour a ton, but just enough to get them all mixed together just a little bit. I'm using alkaline water. I think that should be good. Let me grab the spoon. And forgive me if the camera is a little shaky. I'm going to try to do my best, but I'm working with one hand cooking and one hand that is um, holding the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this all mixed in. And you can see just how pretty that dish is. And if you do create this yourself, I would love to hear from you. It's a very simple dish to create, but it is absolutely delicious. I can just tell from all of the aroma that's coming from it right now. It is vegan if you're plant-based. But just look at that. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on and just let this simmer down for maybe 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to give it a taste just to make sure that I did put in all the seasonings that I want to be in there. And then once it's finished, I will show you exactly how it's served or how I would serve it anyway. And we'll go from there. So I went ahead and tested it, taste tested it, and it's just beautiful. It's absolutely delicious. Perfect blending of seasons. The seasonings and the spices and the flavors of all of the different beans. It's just really, really nice. Now yours will probably come out a little bit differently than mine does, depending on what type of beans that you use, or the types of seasonings and herbs and spices that you use. But look at that, isn't that just beautiful? All of the different beans all working together to create beauty. All of the different seasonings just bringing their own different aroma, their, all, their own individual flavors and fragrances to create one beautiful dish. That was their grand purpose was to create this one beautiful dish and they did it. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on and let this simmer down for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll share with you the final result. I'll see you soon.